Um, we are now going to hear about the Pareto efficient algorithm for multiple objective optimization in e commerce recommendation. Um, and this talk will be given by um, uh, Chao Lin. And uh, this is a collaboration between Alibaba and Rutgers University. So, without further ado, it's Chao uh, Lin, come up and talk. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you everyone, uh, my name is Shalini and I'm glad to be here to introduce our work on uh, multiple objective optimization in e-commerce recommendation. Uh, I'm wondering if I have a pointer? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, please wait for me. Nowadays, work memory systems have, have been concerning with multiple objectives rather than a single one. Uh, some examples include accuracy and uh, diversity, uh, accuracy and fa uh, fairness, uh, popularity and the long tail effect. And in the case of e commerce recommendation, there are several important metrics that we need to bear in mind, uh, such as CTR, CBR, and uh, GMV, GMV is grocery merchandise volume, actually, it means how much money uh, the platform is earning. And the main challenge of multiple objectives uh, optimization and recommendation is that the potential conflict between the objectives. Uh, and we collect one week data from the real world recommender system and plot the, uh, the, uh, the curves, uh, the points of normalized CTR and the normalized GMV uh, in the figure. And and in the case that, uh, in many cases, to, uh, the, to optimize CTR and GMV at, at the same time means there exists a conflict. So, uh, what's the, what should the recommendation in e commerce recommender systems like? So, at least, I think it should be Pareto efficient. So why? Because in, in the case uh, of Pareto efficiency, we know that no single objective can be further improved without sacrificing uh, others. So take a look at this figure. When we are minimizing uh, both function 1 and function 2, we aim to minimize the last functions. Both A and B are Pareto efficient because they cannot be further improved without sacrificing the others. But C is not. Therefore, uh, we, what we want is exactly a Pareto efficient solution, but these Pareto efficient solutions are not unique. All these solutions form a curve called Pareto Frontier. So now we know the motivation for getting Pareto efficient solutions, but how can we get them? There are two mainstream uh, approaches. The first one is evolutionary algorithms, and the second one is scholarization. But for evolutionary algorithms, it's, it works like this. It's a process of heuristic searching. It's good, but it's, it does not have a theoretical guarantee, and furthermore, it's not suitable for online learning. For scholarization technique, it transforms multiple objectives into a single one by putting scholarization weights. But it needs manual selection of scholarization weights, and the lack of mechanism of uh, weight selection. So, our solution is that uh, what we want in, uh, in our work is to get a mechanism that is easy to optimize with a direct, a direct guarantee, it needs less uh, manual work, and the priority, uh, priorities of the objectives can be specified, and it should be super for learning. So, our solution is based on scholarization technique. We provide a theoretical guarantee, and we find, uh, we find a, a mechanism for scholarization weight selection. And first of all, we use gradient descent for optimization, so it is suitable for online learning. We make several assumptions. The first assumption is that multiple objectives can, can be properly formulated. Uh, that means that uh, for each objective, there is a differentiable loss function. And therefore, it can be optimized with gradient descent, and since the focus of this paper is not about ranking, so we use a pointwise ranking scheme. 
This is a formation of uh, our framework, uh, so it is uh, very obvious. Uh, the omega here is a scalarization weight, and CI means the boundary constraint for each objective. It acts as a priority uh, setting. And the key of our work is to find a direction for, uh, for the gradient that is a descent direction for all the loss functions. And uh, the process can, uh, can, uh, is, is going like this iteratively. Uh, so we fixed the scalarization weights first and update the model parameters. Then we fix the model parameters and update the scalarization weights. Then it goes repeatedly. Uh, here is just uh, an illustration of our idea. The condition for updating Omega here the, uh, is a quadratic pro programming problem. Uh, sadly, it is very difficult to solve, uh, but we solve it with a uh, two-step two procedure. First, we relax the problem to an easy one so that a simple yet unfeasible solution is achieved. In the second step, we project the solution back to a feasible one. Uh, there is a theoretical result here uh, when the constraints are zero. Uh, the solution to this problem uh, is, uh, is zero, so the, uh, so the global optimum is achieved, or the solution to this problem is a descent direction that minimizes all the loss functions. As to our, uh, our framework, in the general case, we use uh, two steps to solve uh, the aforementioned condition. In the first step, we use a Lagrange multiplier to solve the uh, relaxed problem. Then we use non-negative least squared to project the unfeasible solution back to a feasible one. Uh, for further details, you can uh, you can check out uh, check it out in the paper. And for a uh, pre frontier generation, uh, we just repeat the scalarization process by setting different boundary constraints. And for uh, when the pre frontier has been generated. Uh, we select the a solution with uh, two uh, in two cases. If the priorities are given, we just need to set the constraint. But if the priorities uh, priorities are not given, uh, we can first approximate the frontier and select the solution with a predefined metric such as fairness. Uh, and we make a specification of our framework in uh, e-commerce recommendation. We concern with two most important metrics in, uh, in our work that, is, uh, that uh, those are CTR and GMV. And these are the two loss functions derived in our work. Actually, you can use any other uh, differentiable loss functions for these two metrics. Uh, and for the model, we use uh, three models for comparison, uh, simple models, uh, uh, largest regression, DN, and uh, one deep learning. Uh, since the focus, as, uh, as the focus of our paper is not about uh, the model or the ranking procedure, so uh, actually our framework is both model-free and formulation-free. Now, a few comes to our uh, experiments, we concern with three research questions. First is about performance in comparison with the baselines. Second, we want to know if our framework is really pretty efficient. Uh, and for the third research, uh, research question, we want to know is scalability in terms of models, uh, model selection. We use uh, a real-world e-commerce recommender system data set collected from uh, our company, and we choose the, the following baselines. The first two baselines are CTR-oriented, the uh, third and fourth are GMB-oriented, and the last two are multiple objective optimization baselines. Uh, these are the metrics we selected. Uh, both both uh, GNV, uh, MAP, and GMV and UCG are the variants uh, of the traditional metrics in terms of GMV. Uh, okay, for the online experiments, we use the, uh, the four most important metrics in, uh, in our system. So, for the first research question, as the figure indicates, uh, uh, the figure and the table indicate that uh, our algorithm is actually effective. In terms of two uh, metrics and their, and uh, it, it is worth noticing that our algorithm achieves a comparable CTR a metric with lambda mod. Since lambda mod uses uh, an approximate loss function for NDCG, it is uh, very much acceptable. For the second research question, we uh, we plot the loss functions of our framework and we further compare uh, the match metrics of our algorithm with evolutionary algorithm. And we can see that uh, evolutionary uh, algorithm is dominated by our framework. 
And for the uh, third research question, uh, we, uh, we compare the performance of three different models. Uh, and the result is that uh, more complex models with more model capacity does help to improve the performance of our framework. Uh, and, and meanwhile, uh, we see that both LR, DN, and WDL can work in our framework. So our framework is actually uh, model free. So it, it shows strong scalability in model selection. So here is the conclusion. Now, I, yeah, I know time, is, uh, time has come, but I want to figure out our uh, some possible directions for future work. So the first one is to, uh, is to uh, find a more efficient way to generate the Pareto frontier. And the second one is to find a way to move from one solution on the Pareto frontier uh, to another. And the third one is to extend the framework to more objectives, even if when there is no, uh, no formulation for backdate uh, readings. So uh, that's all. Uh, thank you. Questions? <laughs> so, yes, I see two hands over there. Uh, okay. Uh, quick question over here on the left. You're right, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so the, the recent work in the industry seems to be using Bayesian optimization approaches for the, doing the parameter selection of the combination function. Have you compared, I might have missed it, but have you compared or thought about that approach instead? Um, thank you. Um, I'm not very much concerned with your question, but what you mentioned is multi-task uh, strategies or? No, using Bayesian optimization techniques for doing a Bayesian optimization thing. Yeah, that's a very good question. Actually, uh, in, in my own work in the company, I'm trying to use spatial optimization to select some uh, scalarization weights for the boundary constraints in our framework. Because you see that uh, despite that the scalarization weights in our loss function are uh, automatically updated, there are some constraints uh, added to each metric. Uh, such as uh, so the, it acts as CI actually in, in the last function. Yeah, CI here. So actually, these are the hyperparameters, and we can use spatial optimization to select the hyperparameters in our last function. Um, but actually, in our work, we have, haven't compared our solution with spatial optimization because uh, the focus of this work is to find a pretty efficient way uh, for learning to rank. Uh, and our strategy is based on uh, real-time updating of the scalarization weights. But vision functions, uh, the vision optimization does not uh, have the ability to uh, to update the, the scalarization weights uh, very uh, in a very real-time way. Actually, you can use uh, vision optimization to conduct online experiments for testing different scalar scalarization weights, but it cannot. Uh, realize that the update uh, in from batch to batch, but actually in our work we can uh, we can update the scalarization weights from batch to batch or ten batch uh, every ten batch or every one hundred batches. Uh, but I really appreciate your idea that uh, vision optimization is a very good way to uh, tune hyperparameters. And actually, we are doing uh, this kind of work in, uh, in my own work in the company. Okay, thank you. So with apologies to the other hands I saw, um, who are going to uh, talk to the speaker during the coffee break uh, and the, the lunch time, uh, we'll move on to the next speaker. Um, so that means that I need to...